Hi everyone, welcome back. This next one is a shoe review. So yeah, this shoe here is the Nike Zoom X Vaporfly Next Percent. And this is version one, this is the green one. And I've had this one quite a while now. I think I've done 640 mile in this, give or take. And honestly, it's a really good shoe. Great for racing. I've done a lot of tempo runs in this and a lot of races as well. It's quite an aggressive shoe, it kind of propels you forward and it's, I would say it's probably best between 5k and 10k. They also released a pink one at the same time and honestly if you can pick up a pair of these in the sale, because I know they've brought out a number 2 as well, it's got the Zoom X foam, a full length carbon plate and it's also got the vapor weave technology. So Nike claim it's a built in secret weapon, it's got a full length carbon plate, the full length of the whole shoe, I know Adidas have brought out um, rods, they've got like a rod system, this almost looks like hands, but this is a full length carbon plate. As you can see there's not much give, it's quite quite firm, As it, it kind of springs back. But they've also brought out an Alpha Fly, which I'll review next I think. And I've, I'm also going to do a video coming up on the Adidas Adios Pro 3. So I've had these 640 mile I think, and honestly they've lasted really well. I, I thought I was only going to get about 300 mile, 200 mile out of these, but They've been perfect until literally today, when I was doing my run on the treadmill, as you can see, the bottom came off. So this patch here actually goes on the bottom here. That bit usually goes on there and it's came off, which I don't think it'll make too much of a difference. I might get another 50 mile out of these maximum. Kind of only using these at the moment for just training runs. If I want to go on the track and do some faster work, I might just chuck these on to save my calves. The laces, I quite like this pattern. The laces kind of come down the side and it feels quite comfortable. It's held up really well. This material is almost like waterproof. Pricing at the time I paid £200 I think, or maybe more. At the moment you can pick up these in the sale for less than a, I think 120 Definitely less than 140 And if you're after a racing shoe and you do a lot of 5Ks and 10Ks, I highly recommend this one. The interior, I'll get a close up in a second, but the interior has got this pattern. That's to save weight. As you can see, Yeah, they've got this black interior here, which just actually keeps your foot quite firmly in there. When you tie the laces quite tight, your heel feels locked in. With this material here, the vapor weave, it's actually resistant, the claim. So it actually says, so go ahead and pour water over your head. These shoes won't soak it all up. But I mean, I think the complaint was in the previous version was in, in the marathon, if it's wet, obviously you're running for a good two to three, even four hours plus. And if your shoes are wet, they're going to hold a lot of weight. So that's so important to have a water resistant shoe. It's just going to be so much lighter in the long run. In terms of grip, these have lasted obviously 600 miles. Still plenty of grip on the on the front there. It's just this back heel's sort of come off. But I mean, if you really wanted to, you could probably super glue that on and get an extra 100 miles. But I feel like the bounce is definitely starting to get a bit less with the Zoom X Foam's kind of lost its cushion a little bit. So I would say probably 400 to 500 miles out of these which is really good for a super shoe. And they say that this Zoom X foam delivers exceptional energy return. And I think it actually does, it's really good. I think the plate itself actually doesn't give you all the help. I think, I'm sure I heard someone say that um, the Zoom X foam itself is what gives you the propulsion forward, the energy return. The carbon plate itself doesn't actually give that, it just provides the strength. So the Vaporfly sits 40 millimeters high and the toe is 32, which gives you an eight mil drop. So that's quite aggressive and really good for Getting up to them speeds, you know, 1500 up to 10k sort of type speeds. You can get away with this for the half marathon and the marathon, but I would say that Alpha Fly is probably slightly better for them longer distances. I believe the heel to toe drop is exactly the same in this one that is in the, the second one, I think. But they've released some really good colorways. My wife's got a pair that's um, like a baby blue. They look really nice. I mean, these green and the pink that they released, I think they only did that really to try and like show them off and... Everyone knew that what kind of shoe it was because they were so bright and luminous. It's a good marketing strategy really when you think from night because the brighter the shoes are, it's like oh, everyone's going to look at them. So these are your two shoes, the Vapor Flies and the Alpha Flies. As you can see, the Alpha Flies obviously got this bubble. I had a race on the weekend by the way and I had to run through mud. It was like a trail race and I opted for these for the cushioning and the grip. They're not so pink anymore. But as you can see, there's a big bubble there air zoom bubble, like a pod, that gives you more cushioning, that's why 
I would say these are probably more suited for the marathon. These, are, these have also come with the Zoom X foam, a carbon plate and they've got the Atom Knit rubber, which to be honest it does feel quite light, but it's also, I would say that's not as waterproof as this. So in bad conditions, I'll have to have a look at that actually, I don't know if the Alpha Flies claim water resistance, but these ones are definitely water resistant, the rain just bounces off these. I would say also the grip in the bottom of the Alpha Flies is slightly better, they're more ridged and you don't get stones in there. I had the, I've got the Carbon X2s, the Hokas, and I get stones in the bottom and it really annoys me, There's no, the stones can't get in there, maybe they can get in these small bits here. But so recommendations, would, would I say to buy these? To be honest, I would, if we want my honest opinion, I would, even though I love Nike, the Adios Pro 3s are just better. They feel better for the shorter stuff, they're more comfortable, and they've, you could probably pick up a pair of these, the second version, for 100 and, I'm looking here online now, and they're 160, 229 for the white ones. You can pick up a pair of orange ones on sportsshoes.com for £157. If you can get a discount code, you might be lucky and get them for £120, but I'm looking here and you can pick up some Adios Pro 3s here for 130 odd quid. So I would highly recommend having, checking them out first. I haven't actually wore the Asics, the Meta Speeds, I think they're called, and there's new Hogas that's just been brought out, and there's a few other ones on the market, but after trying the Adios Pro 3s, my mind's sort of set on them. I love them, I'm going to be wearing them next week in Armagh. I've worn for a track session recently and I was running 800s in 220, no bother. Felt quite comfortable. They were a great shoe. Obviously I've had them a while now, 600 and odd mile in these shoes. They've done as great, but I feel like they're just a little bit outdated now. Whether they bring out uh, an X% 3 or you want to go for the Zoom Streaks or the Alpha Flies if you're doing half marathon or marathon. I would highly recommend looking at other brands as well though. Don't just pigeonhole down Nike because I know a lot of people, a lot of my friends anyway, they like to just stick with one brand and Nike is very popular. You'll see a lot of athletes on the Diamond League circuit wearing Nike and I think a lot of other people are getting sponsored by different brands now. New Balance are doing a lot. Adidas is definitely coming up there. You've got Puma. I would say Puma is probably more for sprint spikes or hurdles. Hoka do great trail shoes, but I just feel like they're lacking a little bit on in terms of road racing front. I feel like they're more towards trail and cushioning. The Clifton 8s are great for cushioning. And the, the Carbon Rockets, I've got the X2s and they're, I would say they're good for tempo runs. Runs where you're running 520 to 5 even six minute mile pace, anything faster than that. I just think they're not as responsive and fast and light. So if I had to rate it out of 10, I would say comfort, it's a good eight out of 10. Weight, a good eight out of 10 as well. Racing for the 5K, yeah, good shoe. Grip, the grip on these, it is quite good actually. So quality of product, yeah, I would say they're really high quality. They've lasted me obviously 600 miles, so yeah. 9 out of 10 in terms of quality and value for money really because if it only lasted 200 mile it would be terrible value for money but the fact I've got 620, 640 mile out of these it just shows you that quite a quality product. In terms of fit I would say the trip to size I'm usually about a size 9, half 8 and I went half 8 in these. They fit pretty snug yeah really good. Then the lace system going down the front left side is really good. Locks your foot in and that extra bit on the heel sort of locks your heel in as well. There's nothing worse than having it, it slide around on a heel. And I've never had any blisters in these at all, so I can't complain about the fit. They're quite snug, they've lasted this long. One thing I would say though is they're quite narrow. If you've got quite a wide foot, you might find when turning sharp corners or when the surface isn't the best, they are actually quite narrow, so you haven't got as much support. If you have got quite a fat foot as well quite narrow and you could get blisters but i've never had that problem because i've got quite narrow feet maybe they should do like a, um, a wider foot option in the future i've noticed hoka in that clifton 8 they actually do a wide foot version of the same shoe i know it costs more money to manufacture but it is quite helpful for the bigger folk out there and i say style when they first came out they were a bit, a bit out there they had the pink and they had the green colorway They've brought out so many different colours now and there's some pretty cool colours. I would have liked at the time to have a dark blue with my vest being what with Harry has being blue and white. That would be a nice colour to have but obviously at the time there was only the green and the pink. So it looks, I would say, yeah, probably 
I would say seven and a half out of ten. They look all right, but they're nothing, nothing special. I, I do highly rate the vapor flies. I think they're good. It's just they are quite a bit old now. If you can get a pair of Adios Pro Freeze in this sale, go for them. If not, you can get a, if you can pick up a pair of them for hundred and thirty pound to hundred pound. I would highly recommend it because shoes are quite a lot expensive these days, and when you think you're only getting, they recommend. 200 to 300 miles. I've done well out of mine. I've got 600 obviously, but when you work it out, how much it costs per mile. I mean, I paid 200 pounds for them, so it's cost me 33 pence per mile to run on them, which isn't too bad really, considering if it was only 200 mile, it would be a pound a mile. One big, big bonus is them being waterproof. That is huge. If you're racing a 10K up to a marathon in these, and they're fully waterproof, you're saving a lot of weight in the long run for the Adios Pro Freeze, if I'm being totally honest. And because they're now nearly the same price as these, I would kind of be more sweet to go towards them. My friend Dan Dixon is sponsored by ASICS and he absolutely loves their trainers. He says the racing shoes are absolutely amazing. I may have to pick up a pair of them, try them out for years. It's a lot of money, I know that, but if the channel sort of blows up a little bit, I'm going to invest a lot of money in future videos. I'm thinking about buying some AirPod Pros just to review some headphones for you guys. If there's any other trainers you really want us to review, I'm interested in the, the ASICS ones. And I'm also interested in the new Hogas. I would love to do some longer tempo runs, you know, 10 plus, up to 15 mile tempos in the new Hogas. So yeah, that's my review on these Vaporfly 1s. 600 plus mile in these, and they've done me great, but I just feel like they're just outdated slightly. And I'm a bit gutted that that's fallen off. Because I could have lasted, these could have lasted an extra 100, 200 mile if that hadn't have fallen off. But so yeah, watch this space and I'll catch you in the next one.